Hi everyone, so today I want to talk about this idea of changing undertones. Can you change from a cool skin undertone to a warm skin undertone or vice versa? If you're completely new here, I'll leave a link down below to some videos that you could watch to learn more about my color analysis system. And if you are not new here but you haven't watched my video on the lightest skin tones, I would suggest watching that because I cover a lot of the points that I'm going to talk about in this video, in that video, in more detail depth. And I also offer color consults through my website and I'll leave a link to those down below as well. This lady was kind enough to let me share her photos in my videos so that I could show you guys how she changes undertones from cool to warm. And she's also a color analyst herself and she reached out to me after she watched my lightest skin tones video telling me that she might be experiencing this effect of switching from cool to warm in her own life. So we're just talking about the skin undertone itself and we're not talking about the hair or the features. So the skin undertone falls on a spectrum. On the left we have Cool and Radiant who are the coolest undertones and they look amazing in cool and bright colors. And then as we move a little bit warmer, a little bit closer to neutral but still cool, we have Cool and Delicate and they look amazing in cool muted colors. And then we have Warm and Delicate which is slightly warmer and they look amazing in warm and muted colors and finally we have warm and radiant at the warmest side of the spectrum and they look amazing in warm and bright colors. So this is all talking about the skin pigment itself and we're not talking about a situation where we don't have any pigment at all. So what happens when we don't have any pigment at all? When we are at the lightest of the light? So this doesn't happen for a lot of people. It's only a rare case at the very, very lightest, most extremely light skin tones. When we don't have any pigment at all, we're actually cool and radiant. And this is because of the cool capillaries and veins underneath the skin that are showing through and giving a really strong blue dominant to the skin. So we have cool and radiant. And then if we have cool and radiant pigment as well, we will stay cool and radiant when we add our own pigment. But if we have warm pigment, when we add our own pigment to that cool, very, very light skin, we might actually go from cool to warm. And again, for more details on this, you could watch that video that I linked down below. But let's get into our example and I'll show you guys what I mean. So here we have a lady who goes from cool and radiant on the left to warm and radiant on the right. And you can see that her pigment is very warm. You can see on her neck, her pigment is very warm on the right and her face is very warm and she looks really nice with that warm red lipstick as well. And on the left, you can see that she is not so tan, so she's quite light there and she is cool and radiant. So she has some royal blue on, which looks amazing on her and a magenta, very cool colored lipstick as well, which looks really great on her. And she also confirmed with me that on the right, she doesn't have any foundation on her neck and she also didn't use any self-tanner, so that is her own pigment. So when she is at her lightest, just like when everyone is at this extremely light skin tone, we're talking about Anne Hathaway, that very, very light skin tone, it's going to be cool and radiant. And you can see how amazing she looks in these royal blues. And there's really no warmth to her skin. There's no yellow to her skin. It's very, very cool colored. But if she were to tan and add her own pigment, she would become warm and radiant. But what happens when she tans just a tiny bit? She doesn't tan all the way to warm and radiant in her case. So when she adds just a teeny tiny bit of her own warm and radiant pigment, you can think of it as taking a, an ice cold glass of water and adding a tiny bit of hot water into it. It becomes a little bit warmer and it's not necessarily warm it might just go up to a little bit of a warmer temperature so but still be cool so this is what happened with her so she went from cool and radiant added a touch of her own pigment and she became cool and delicate so here she is looking cool and delicate she doesn't have that same kind of radiance to her skin it's more of a soft glow now but it's still a cool color to the skin and then when she adds 
enough of her warm and radiant pigment, she might become warm and delicate because she's on her way to warm and radiant. If she adds enough of that warm and radiant pigment, eventually she will be warm and radiant. But since she didn't add enough of that pigment yet, she is warm and delicate on her way to being warm and radiant. So here is an image of her looking warm and delicate. You can see that she has some warmth to her skin there. Now, I put a question mark there because I only had two photos from the same day taken with the same camera and in pretty similar lighting. So I would imagine she is probably warm and delicate there, but I'd have to see some more photos to confirm that. But it does make sense that she is traveling from cool and radiant to warm and radiant, and there would be some states in between that some undertones in between that and those undertones are the ones that are closer to neutral while her skin balances that coolness of the capillaries and the warmth of her pigment and then finally when she adds enough of her warm and radiant pigment she becomes warm and radiant and again this is only in the case where your pigment is actually warm and radiant not everyone changes undertones and definitely it's also not for people who don't start out very very light even a medium to light skin tone, you probably already have enough of your pigment to really get a sense of if your pigment is warm or cool. So this is really a very, very special case that I wanted to share with you guys. And most people don't experience this effect because they aren't light enough to start. But you can see here, she is warm and radiant now. So you can see these photos are in daylight. You can see that none of these three photos are necessarily overly warm as a whole so the whites on those photos look pretty white they don't look like they are cream or anything like that indicating that the entire photo is very warm so she is warm and radiant in all of these photos and she also told me again herself as a color analyst she noticed that she is warm and radiant as well when she gains a bit of her own pigment and you can see that her skin just has an obvious warmth to it a lot of warmth to it so the next question people may be asking is, is this actually what's happening? Is she going along the skin undertone spectrum and as she gains pigment and adds a tiny bit, it will warm up her skin little by little and she'll go through actually all the undertones. She'll go through cool and delicate when she adds a little bit of pigment, when she adds a little more she'll become warm and delicate, and then when she adds enough of her own pigment she'll finally become warm and radiant. Is this actually what's happening? Well, what we can know for sure is that she definitely changes undertones she does go from cool and radiant all the way to warm and radiant just like she confirms herself and just like we've seen in these photos multiple photos where she is obviously cool and radiant and then she is warm and radiant when she gains pigment and it also draws a consistent picture because whenever she is at her lightest she is cool and radiant and whenever she gets a bit tanner and adds her pigment, she tends to become warm and radiant. But what we don't know is how neat this story really is. Is it really that simple that you travel across the skin undertone spectrum and you add your own pigment and you experience all of the different undertones on your way to your natural pigments undertone? Or it could be a little bit more complicated. It could be that you change undertones because of nutrition or because of different supplements or anything like that. So this isn't to say that I have all the answers as to why this happens or the mechanism by which this happens, but I do know that it happens. And I do find that more often than not, it can be a pretty neat story of just traveling across the skin undertone spectrum. And what I can definitely tell you is that even though it's not very common, probably over 95% of people, I would estimate, don't change undertones, still it happens and it's definitely a real thing. So I've had clients who have told me that they switch from warm to cool and that when they are lighter, they are cool, but as soon as they add their own pigment, their pigment has an unmistakable yellowness to it, a warmth to it, and they are then better complemented by warmer colors. And I've seen clients, again, going cool, from cool and delicate to warm and delicate. We've seen today that this lady in this video went from cool and radiant to warm and radiant. Now you could say, well, this is, these are just the photos, but I've actually seen in real life one person 
one person in real life who was clearly cool and radiant, looked amazing in royal blues, she ran a marathon, and she came back warm and delicate. Now, this is something that was unmistakable. She clearly came back warmer, so her pigment was a warm and delicate pigment. So people can definitely change undertones, and there are also celebrity examples that I mention in my lightest skin tone videos, and on top of that, underneath that video and underneath a lot of my videos, people share their experiences about how they become warmer as they tan, as in cool colors no longer flatter them, not just they look better in everything because they're tanner, but because cool colors no longer flatter them when they get a tan, they find that warm colors are actually better. And last but not least, I mentioned color analysts' experiences here because I think some color analysts do find that when someone is very, very light, even if they're a warm season, so to speak, they look better in cool colors. And even if their hair is very warm and their eyes are warm, if their skin is light enough, they are just not flattered by those warm colors like yellow. And I've seen people mention this to me before. So I suspect it could be some kind of common knowledge, but it hasn't really been formalized or fully integrated into color analysis systems that the lightest skin tones really are cool and radiant. But there is a certain motivation to believing that the skin undertone doesn't change. It doesn't change with anything. It doesn't change if you tan. It doesn't change with age. It doesn't change really pretty much with anything. And that it's some special thing that we're going to find and we'll have it for the rest of our lives. But really, I think that it's more of a skin undertone story for some people. Some people have a very simple case. Again, most people have a simple case where they just have a warm and delicate undertone and they always have and that's it. And for some people, it's more of a story of if they are very, very light, they are cool and radiant, and then they move through the spectrum and become maybe warm and delicate or warm and radiant, or they, at their lightest, maybe they're not cool and radiant, maybe they are cool and delicate at their lightest, but their pigment is actually warm, so they will travel to warm and radiant later if they get a tan. So it's all about really understanding your own coloring and paying attention to the colors that you're wearing and seeing how they look on you and trusting what you see as well. You know, don't stick to an idea that the skin undertone never changes. If you see clearly in front of you that yours is changing and it's changing in a consistent way. So the goal is not to just say, hey, you know what? I can't really figure out my undertone, it's probably changing. This is really a, quite a rare case. Your undertone probably doesn't change, but let me know in the comments what your experiences have been with this, if you have ever experienced it. I always try to get a full picture of someone's coloring. So if their experience might be that when they're lighter, they might be cooler, I try to take that into account and combine it with what I'm seeing and really draw a full picture of their coloring and gain hopefully a relatively full understanding of the coloring of whoever it is that I'm color analyzing. If it's a client, of course, I can talk with them and ask them questions. If it's a celebrity, I can do more research and maybe figure out their lifestyle to really understand what is causing the different changes I could see and also using some critical thinking of course. I mean is it just the photo or is this something that's real? So try to do this for yourself and try to draw that complete picture about your coloring or for anyone else that you might be color analyzing, a friend, a celebrity, or even one of your clients if you're a color analyst. So that's it, you guys. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching. Let's say thank you to this lady for letting me share her images. I really, really appreciate it. And I know you guys do too. And I will leave a link to my consults down below. And I'll talk to you next time.